Hey, what's going on, Jesus followers? We are so excited that you're tuning in to Sunday service. My name is Aaron, and I want to just welcome you guys to uh, service. We're about to get into some worship, but before we do that, I just want to encourage you guys, wherever you're at right now, whether in your bedroom, whether you're outside, or any other place on planet Earth, I want to invite you to engage in the service with us. Would you open up your heart right now and receive all that God has for you in this moment? But before we get started, I'm just going to go ahead and pray us in. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. God, we're here to engage with you. God, we're here to, uh, to be with you and to hear what you have to say, God. Right now in this moment, we lay every weight aside, God. Even now, go ahead and lay those weights aside. Tell, tell the Lord what you're laying before him. Whatever stresses you got on your mind right now, whatever weights you feel like you're carrying, go ahead and tell the Lord that you lay those aside. God, we lay everything that may be bothering us, stressing us at your feet right now, Jesus. And in this moment, we choose to worship you and engage with you, Lord. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Space, your love invades. You're calling me out. 
chapter 1 verse 19 it says if you are willing and obedient you shall eat the good of the land and this is what the Lord said to the specific people if you are willing and obedient you shall eat the good of the land I feel like what the Lord is saying in this moment is that there are some of us some of some of us who have gotten the bitter end of something I don't know what it is but you're in a situation right now and you feel like you got the bitter end of something your situation isn't working out for whatever reason you feel like you're in this place where stuff is is against you that you're not you're not where you want to be everything is pressing on top of you situations aren't working like you thought they would and it's just honestly a sucky place and you feel like you got the bad end of something i want to tell you right now the lord says if you are willing and obedient you shall eat the good of the land that's a promise see what we're singing in this song is we're telling the lord we're available see when you're available you're willing and obedient when you say, Lord, here I am, here's my life, God, whatever you want to do. And in this moment, I feel like God is saying, if you make yourself available, if you're willing and obedient, if you're willing to do what he says, if you'll be obedient to what God is telling you to do, the Holy Spirit is now telling you inside, you feel it, what you're supposed to do. There's something that you got to do, some action that you got to take right now in this moment. And if you do it, if you make yourself available, if you say, Lord, here I am, a living sacrifice, ready to do whatever it is that you're telling me, you shall eat the good of the land. You shall bear these fruits. You shall receive the promise. You shall receive these results that God set before you before time was even ever a thing. He saw your life. He saw every single time stamp of your life. And he saw this moment and he's saying, now, if you are willing and obedient, if you make yourself available, you shall eat the good of the land. So with that being said, I want to go ahead and pray this promise. I want to pray this over our lives. Dear Father, I thank you that you've spoken to us in this time of worship. Even now, you're reminding us, you're, you're bringing it up in our hearts, things that we know we ought to do, things that we have to make ourselves available in. And God, that's what we say today. We're available. God, whatever it is that you're asking us to do, whether it's difficult, even if it makes us uncomfortable, God, even if even we think about it in the nighttime and it even makes us emotional, God, even in those moments, we say we make ourselves available. Come and do whatever it is that you want to do on us, God. And I thank you, Lord, that as we do it, you give us the strength and the courage to do these things, Father. As we do them, we shall eat the good of the land. We shall receive the promise and we shall see your goodness play out in our lives. I thank you that you're a good God and that you said you never leave us nor forsake us. So Lord, help us to walk this out. Help us to take the necessary steps to seeing the good of the land be a part of our life. God, we open up ourselves so that you can do whatever it is in us. We're available. 
we're available for you. And with that, Lord, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, I don't know about you guys, but not even myself, I'm encouraged. I love these times of worship, and I hope that you do as well. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get uh, on with the service. And uh, stay tuned and stay engaged with the rest of it. Hey, Jesus followers, Uh, we are so glad again that you've joined us for Sunday night service. I'm really excited for the word tonight. I know it's going to encourage you. I know it's going to bring strength to your life. Uh, We've been on a series called Strength and Courage where we've been walking through the book of Joshua chapter by chapter and I've been pointing out some things and I just encourage you to, to walk through Joshua with us so that you can see the book in its full breadth and context. And uh, I just want to also remind you and encourage you about every Tuesday, we put out a video called Hot Topics, where we talk about practical ways to apply the Bible, to apply apply God's principles to our lives. Uh, Unplugged sessions, where our worship team, every Friday night at 6, puts out some time where you can spend time with God, unplugged from the world, and uh, and Sunday night services, of course. So let's get into it right now. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that it reminds you. Uh, Tonight I'm going to talk about this. As you're taking notes, remember, note takers are history makers. As you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. The way God sees it. The way God sees it. We need to see our situations the way that God sees sees it. We're going to get into Joshua 6 here, and this story is one of my son's favorite stories about the story of Jericho, how Joshua uh, took down this this huge city. But we're going to get into this right here, starting in, in verse 1, Joshua 6, verse 1. It says this, now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. So Jericho is securely shut up. None went out, none went in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and its mighty men. (laughs) I'm talking about the way God sees it. Now, imagine, imagine Joshua walking up to the city Jericho. We've talked about it in previous messages where Jericho was a massive city. It had massive walls, like so big that people lived within the walls. It was huge. And, and the children of Israel are not warriors. They do not have these mighty cannons. They don't have guns. They don't have... They don't have bazookas. They don't have stuff to take down the wall. They have no physical power. They have no ramming power. They, they've got none of that, you guys. They, they were slaves and farmers, sheep herders. Like, these are not people who, who have these great strategies. And they walk up to the city, Jericho, and God goes, Look, look, you, you win. I've given it to you. Look. Look at it. And, and some of the people, now, jo- now Joshua was with the Lord. So Joshua was seeing it the way God saw it. But the people were probably like, um, this, is not, this is not good. I, how in the world are we going to win this battle? But Joshua, God sp- speaks to Joshua and he says, look, see it. See the way I've given it to you. It's, it's over. It's done. You win. You win. And I want to tell you, the way you see things right now is really important. Is really important to how you will move in strength and in courage. Point number one is this. You need God's perspective. You need God's perspective. <laughs> uh, remember in previous chapters when the spies were sent into Jericho 
and Rahab, the harlot who, who housed them, she said this, our, our hearts are done. Like we, we have no spirit in us. We know that you guys are just going to march right through us, right? She, she gave away the fact that too, we're, we're done. We are so afraid of you guys. Like we've got nothing in us. If the children of Israel, if Joshua had focused on the outward circumstances, he would have had no strength and no courage to win the war, to win the battle. But because he knew what God was speaking to him, he knew what God was saying, he could move forward. He could move forward. We need God's perspective. I love this scripture in Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9 in the New Living Translation. It says this, My thoughts, this is God talking, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts just the other day i was i was really um i was really uh really kind of bothered by something and and taken back by something and and i thought i thought lord i need your perspective i need your thoughts on this i don't need my thoughts i don't need my earthly human thoughts i need your thoughts on this and we have to approach it this way we've got to approach every situation god i need your thoughts on this situation i need your perspective see if you get so stuck in your perspective all the time you are reduced to the same level of thinking that everyone else has and we have to get god's thoughts we have to get his perspective on our situation some of you have a family member who's not saved and you're so frustrated with the way they act can i bring you up to god's thoughts and make you realize that they have nothing on the inside of them that has transformed to live rightly why would you hold an unbeliever to something when they can't even comprehend the things of god when they have not been saved when their spirit is not alive to god (laughs) we need to get god's thoughts on every single situation we need to get God's thoughts on every single situation. You know, what's funny is being a parent will teach you so much in such a short amount of time. But Zion right now, our two-year-old, every now and then he'll get really upset. He'll get really frustrated. And what he, the best way that he can verbalize what he's thinking is sometimes he'll look at me and he'll go, I don't like you. I don't like you, daddy. And what's he, do I get offended? At first, I was like, crushed by it i was like oh my oh my two-year-old doesn't like me what am i doing wrong but when i step back let me say it in a different way when i get god's thoughts on it okay this is a immature two-year-old this is a two-year-old who's angry who's upset about something and the only way he knows how to communicate it is i don't like you daddy can you imagine how immature of me would it be to go well you know what i don't like you either yeah you're a jerk, you two-year-old. Right? It'd be ridiculous for me to respond that way because I have a higher perspective that says he's two. He's two years old. He doesn't know how to respond. He doesn't know how to communicate that what he's really saying is, Daddy, I'm upset that you told me not to hit Judah, right? Daddy, I'm upset that you, that you made me go on timeout after doing something wrong, right? He doesn't know how to communicate it. We, in the same level of thinking, we we need to get out of an immature perspective. We need to get out of an earthly perspective and get God's thoughts. So point number one is we need God's perspective. Uh, Now let's get into the rest of this chapter here in Joshua. God gives Joshua his marching orders literally. And he says, this is how you're going to defeat the city of Jericho. Uh, for six days in a row, you and the people are going to wake up, you and the men of war, you're going to march around the city one time and you're going to be done. That's what you're going to do. You're going to literally just walk around the city and that's it. That's your war strategy. And on the seventh day, you're going to march around it seven times. And at the end of the seventh time that you walk around, you're going to shout and blow the trumpets and you're going to win. And Joshua may have thought, like, that's, that's the strategy, Lord? Like, okay, well, listen, guys, up to this point, this makes sense with God's pattern. God said, step into the river, and it's going to blow wide open, right? Now he's saying, just walk around the city, and it's going to fall. 
And you need to realize that when God gives you instructions that you don't really think make a lot of sense, guess what? They make a ton of sense. Because when your little part is put into it, God puts the super on the natural and he makes it supernatural. He will make your situation supernatural when you just obey his simple instructions. And Joshua gets these instructions from God and he's like, okay, uh, this is what we're doing. So this is what he does. I love this part because God didn't instruct Joshua to do this, but God does some, or Joshua does something so smart in verse 10 of Joshua 6. Joshua, it says this, Now Joshua commanded the people saying, You shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day that I say to you, shout, then you shall shout. Now check this out. Joshua basically says, y'all going to shut up for a whole week until I say so. Can you imagine from that moment, you don't even get to discuss whether or not you want to not say a word. He says, hey, y'all are going to shut up. Y'all are not going to talk. Now, why did he say that? Because Joshua knew the power of words. And he also knew the, the toxic nature of complaining. Joshua knew the toxic nature of complaining because Joshua had watched the people complain in the desert and they were not allowed to enter into the promised land on the first time around. So Joshua has learned his lesson. We're not going to allow complaining to spread. We're not going to allow gossip to spread. We're not going to allow bitterness and these way people talk. We're not going to allow that to spread. No, we're not going to be a part of that. Y'all going to shut up and you're going to watch God come through. You're going to watch him do a miracle. And so he told everybody, you're going to shut up for seven days. The seven day shut up. That's what, that's what Joshua brought. And some of y'all are talking way too much. Some of you have friends and the way they talk to you, guess what? It's not helping you win the battles of the Lord. It's not helping you to step into God's best for you. The way you're talking, oh God, come on guys. We need to get out of that junk. We need to get out of criticizing each other. We need to get out of cutting each other down, of talking about people on social media. Oh my, oh my as my grandma would say, oh my heavenly days. Like we, if you're spending time arguing with people on social media, I just, may you be so convicted right now to get out of that crap, okay? It needs to be done in your life. We've got to get focused on God. Joshua says, no complaining, no talking, no talky, none of it, okay? And I'm just, some of you, maybe I'm repeating this because some of you need to hear it. You need to just stop the chitter chatter. It needs to be done. And you need to focus on what God is saying to you in Jesus name. Joshua knew that complaining would keep them out of the promised land and complaining against God will keep you out of the promised land too. And I just, mm, I want to stop right now because as I, as I prepared this message, God, as I was, as I was praying and preparing for this, God gave me a prophetic word over you and over this generation. And, uh, and I'm just going to read it like God shared it to me. You are a generation who will spread the gospel like never before. You will not complain like generations before you waiting to get back to church like it's always been, waiting to get back to life like it's always been. You will bring breakthrough and revival in America. Take up God's mantle he is placing on you. Listen to the Lord carefully and let his voice drown out all other voices. I am the Lord and I will not be stopped. This is a time for great victories whom the world, uh, this is a time for great victories and whom the world disqualifies because of age or lack of education. I qualify with the Holy Spirit who empowered Jesus to do miracles. And I just release that over you right now in Jesus name that you need to see that your purpose is to spread the gospel like never before. Wake up out of the out of the pursuit of the American dream and see God's dream for your life in Jesus name. Come on, that is 
Someone needs to have a praise break right now that you realize that God has so much more for your life. We need to see it the way that God sees it in Jesus' name. And my, my uh, point number three is this. Take the opportunity. Take the opportunity. I can't stress this enough because notice this. After Joshua, after they walk around, for, for six days. Then on the seventh day, they walk around seven times. Then they shout and they blow the trumpets. Look at verse 20. It says this. So, uh, so the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpet. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city and every man straight before him. And they took the city. And I just want to say this, that there are going to be opportunities for you where, let me say it like this, God opens the door a crack and you need to bust that door down and take opportunities that the Lord gives you. Some of you are going to talk to people and they're going to say things like, yeah, you know, I just really have been like searching for meaning in life. You need to, with your foot, you need to boom, kick that door down and say, let me tell you how I found meaning in life. You're going to be talking to someone and and it's a friend and they're discouraged about something. Don't just, oh, I'm just, oh, I just, I'll be praying for you. No, bust the door down with the gospel and let them know that Jesus is the reason for life. He is the only reason for living. We need to take opportunities. And when, when the walls fall, when the walls start to fall down, you need to rush into the city in a sense and do what God's calling you to do. Take the city in Jesus name. Take the opportunity. Some of you are praying for your family members and you've been too timid to really share the gospel. And now is the time to do it. Now's the time to do it. Cast off the, the, the thoughts that you have about yourself. Cast off the fear of man and let the fear of God overwhelm you to say, I'm going to do God's will no matter what. I'm going to do God's will no matter what. Some of you may be in a classroom on Zoom and you just say, hey, teacher says, hey, does anybody have anything to say today? And you're like, I do. Jesus is king. <laughs> he is Lord of my life and he's changed my life. And I just want to tell you all that Jesus is real. He will change your life if you let him. Thank you. And then you put yourself back on mute. I don't even, you, we need to just not care. Who cares what people can comment about you? Who cares how people can shame you online? It doesn't matter. You don't stand before them. When you get to heaven's gates, you stand before Jesus. <laughs> Woo, I feel some strength and some courage coming on somebody today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want to pray for you today that strength and courage would over come the way that you think. We need to see it the way God sees it. Father, right now in Jesus' name, I declare over every person watching and every person listening that you have a great plan for their life. And Lord, I pray right now that they would rise up into the purpose and the plan that you have called them to. Right now in Jesus' name, every thought of the fear of man would be gone in the name of Jesus. And Lord, that they would be released into the fullness of their calling here on this earth. In Jesus' name. And if you want to give your life to Jesus right now, just be open with him and cry out to him and say, Jesus, I give you my life fully right now. I surrender my life to you in Jesus' name. And for those of you who say yes to Jesus, I just want to tell you this. Jesus is not setting up your life for this pretty white picket fence kind of a life. Guess what? He, he promises to bless us. He promises to prosper us. He promises to lead us. But guess what? He also said in this life, you will have trouble. But guess what? He says, don't be, don't be afraid. I have overcome the world. We need to get to the real gospel that says, yeah, God does things great in our lives. And guess what? We face some pretty tough talent challenges too, but he is our anchor through it all. He is our overcomer through it all. And we need to pursue him with all of our lives. That's why we call ourselves Jesus followers. Well, we're going to do again what we did last week. And at the end of this, we're going to have our unplugged session from this last week. If I remember correctly, it's Pastor Eric leading in worship with us. And I just want you, if you want some time with the Lord, if you want to just worship him and respond to him right now, click this and let God minister to your heart. We love you guys so much. Let's keep following Jesus together.